Hello. I'd like to give you an introduction to the Custom Reports feature of Open eSign Forms. You may fam be familiar with the General Transaction Search Report, which allows you to uh, look across all your different transactions and provides just a canned report. But with Custom Reports, you can extract just the data that you're interested in from your forms. So the data is not locked inside your documents anymore, but you can pull them out extract them, view them in reports, download them, or even upload them into other systems. When you search for a report, you basically select transaction types, whether you're interested in production or test transactions, who started them, when was it last updated, or when was it started, and you can specify a date range, picking from any of these choices, or specify an actual date range that you want. Furthermore, if you know the party's email address, you can enter that here. Lastly, this is a custom field, last name, and we specify this is searchable, so it appears down in this area to allow us to search on the actual data fields from inside of our uh, documents. Now, you'll see if I put in an M, it will find all the entries that have an M inside of them, and that's because by default this is a contained search, as you can see on the tooltip. If we were to put a pre prefix to say it needs to start with M, we would see that it would now only list those that began with M. The good thing is you can click on any row inside your report and get details on that transaction, including uh, activity logs, emails that were sent out, and you can use the snapshot feature to see the document exactly as it was completed by that party at that time. Now you wonder, this is not a very interesting report, so let's go ahead and program to our report templates and we'll configure this demo report so that we can add additional report fields that are of interest to us. As you can see, we have the first name and last name with the last name being searchable. But we want to add just a few other fields just to show how it works. If we were to pick uh, the salary field. We can then pick a money format or just a number format depending on what you want it to appear in the column. And then you'll notice if I pick a date field, my choices now are dates and so we'll do a month, day, year format. There are also some built-in fields. Uh, one is uh, the literal and this is often used uh, when it needs to be up loaded into different systems and there needs to be a value in a field but that field doesn't actually appear in any of your documents. So for example we may have a uh, customer number that needs to be uploaded and they tell us that our number uh, is there so that will always appear in that column. Also there are some other built-in fields like for example we can do the status text and we'll allow this to search and status text uh, typically tells you whether it's completed or canceled, but it'll also tell you uh, the last party and the document that they were working on. So this is good enough just to show the change, uh, but we're actually going to reorder some of these fields to show that how easy it is to drag and drop. So if we want to put the last name first, excuse me, last name first, we can do so. If we want to put this literal field uh, between the two names, we can do that. We click OK. We save our report, and now when we go to run the report, you'll see that our fields have actually been reorganized to match this new field. Also, notice that because we said that the status uh, was searchable, we now get an entry in there. So for example, I can type in first party, and I'll only find the records that are in the status of first party. Now where does all of this data come from? That is also configured when you're developing a package of documents, you specify how to map the fields. So inside a package of documents, you specify that from a given document, the field in there gets mapped to something called a report field. Now in this case, you'll see that the names and values are actually the same in each one, but it's possible as multiple documents are created by multiple people, somebody may have birth date, or date of birth, or DOB and all of those names we would want to match to the same report field so that if we were running a report across all those transactions we would be able to see them. Another aspect of this as you'll see is that 
uh, you can click a field and specify whether it's to appear in the to-do. So when a transaction of this type is sitting in someone's to-do queue, they'll also see this name and information that they want to do. Now just for grins, we're going to go ahead and just add one other field just to show how this works. And we'll add this year graduated from high school. And we actually have already uh, built that field, so we'll just go ahead and select that. And we'll add that to our fields. And then again, we have to save that package so that every time at this point now when a transaction is saved these fields are saved into these report fields so that mapping is uh, important so now if we were to go back to our report template we can go back and we can select that and add that to our field as well so we'll come down here and select our year graduated we'll change the label to say graduate just send it as a year that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is, because some of them were kind of boring, I'm just going to go ahead and remove a field as well. So I'm going to get rid of that literal and we'll just be left with this as our report. Again, we're going to save the report. Then when I run it, we'll get the new sets of information, including this new graduated column. Now, for example, you might say, well, where did that data come from? Well, if I were to run this transaction. We can say that uh, this is the Tuesday morning. And we're just going to pick a uh, fake SSN and we'll just say he graduated in 2011 and his birth date is April 5th 1995 with a salary of 35000 Now at this stage, it's not been submitted. Transaction is still in progress. So if we were to go back to our report, you will see, indeed, it's in this status. If we click on it to see the detail, we'll not only see it's in progress, but note that there's no document snapshot because it has not ever been submitted. If we bring it back up and now and submit that document and run the report, we'll see it's actually now completed. And also, we can go back to the snapshot and you'll see exactly the document as it was at the time it was completed. Now another interesting aspect uh, for reports, unlike the uh, canned built-in report, is that you can add permissions. And so, some of the kinds of permissions that you can do is you can specify who can run the report Also, if transactions can be started by external parties, say from a link off of a website or integrated into some other system so they're not logged in at the time they start, those will be started by external users. And you need to give permission for a person running a report to be able to see transactions started by such people. There's also one called any user. And so this is often used by managers. So managers are allowed to see the transactions not only that they started, but also those that belong to the members of the other groups that might include all of their uh, team members. By default, when people can run reports, they'll only be able to see test transactions. If you want them to be able to see production transactions, you need to put their groups in this list as well. The next field talks about exporting data in CSV. This is also used for the Excel spreadsheet. So if you want to be able to download the data, you need to be given this sort of permission. While not yet implemented yet, transaction archives are a system administrator function that allows you to export an entire transaction, including all of the documents, the data, activity logs, etc. And this is really used for archiving and is not a typical user function. Additionally, we have things like logs, activity logs, the email logs, data snapshots, and the document snapshots. So you can control exactly which of these different buttons people can see. So when they run their report and they click on the details, will they be able to view the snapshots or not? Will they be able to see the email or not, or the activity logs? These are all configurable. Now that you see how to build a custom report containing the data fields that you want, you may want to take that data with you. You can export the data to an Excel spreadsheet, or you can download as CSV 
a comma separated value format that is often used when integrating with third parties. For example, you may upload the data into a background authorization system or into a payroll system, or you may take data and put it into a financial analysis system. When you export or run the CSVs, you'll get all of the data that appears in the report. And so, for example, we see all the fields. But if for some particular reason you don't want a field, like let's say we don't want the uh, last status date and we don't want the year they graduated in our report. Well, without rerunning it or rebuilding a report, we can just remove those fields and again take a look at our data and you'll see that we only have those fields now in our report. Further, if for just for one particular reason this report was correct but the order was wrong, you can drag a column header and reorganize the fields so that the next time we run you'll see that our data has now been reordered. Thank you for allowing me to show you custom reports and open eSign forms.